my dear sisters and brothers coming here in this event gives me a feeling a different feeling like coming in home coming in family i have emotional bonding with ashoka being one of you i won't call myself old <laughs> but uh, maybe senior than many of you senior ashoka fellow so as a senior family member i welcome the new ashoka fellows in this family thank you so much i always believe in many things but one thing that every problem in the world is born with a solution in itself if we are open with our minds if we are genuine if we are committed to solve then no problem on the earth is unsolvable we can solve every problem i believe in the unlimited unlimited potential in each one of you each one of us each one of you is a leader each one of you is a change maker each one of you is a is an entrepreneur little efforts have to be made to dig it out then you can change the whole world when i started my fight against child slavery in india and then in rest of the world it was a non issue i have to find solutions to every single thing because people thought that it's poverty it's quite common it's usual thing they did not think that it is a violation of human rights and it was the time when the whole notion of child rights was not yet invented i started in 1980 81 and the international community the united nations adopted the un convention on the rights of the child in 1989 almost a decade after my work but i don't want to take the credit for that there were many other factors i was a tiny part of it so we made it possible in 15 or 17 years the number of child laborers in the world has been decreased from 260 million to 168 million the people thought that this is so complicated problem so difficult problem so Uh, much deep rooted in the mindsets of the people or quite complicated because of the mafia and other things but it was possible many people never thought that education could become or should be treated as fundamental human right people thought that education is one of the charities one of the social welfare measures or maximum it is a development issue but when some people like us or me started talking that education is a birthright of every human being learning is a birthright there is no obstacle put in achieving education and finally in the dakar framework framework of action on education education has been considered as a fundamental human right so the whole notion was changed that it is not a charity it's a human right so many interesting things happened linking the whole issue of child slavery and child labor with the consumers awareness is what as it was mentioned and also the social responsibility of the businesses it happened when the csr the whole notion of corporate social responsibility was not born but things happen so in one sentence every solution is here we have to take it out from ourselves 
and for the newcomers and for my Ahsoka fellow brothers and sisters. I would say that we are living in the age of the three-dimensional approach, like television, we wanted to buy 3D televisions, we wanted to, now the smartphones, I learned that the smartphones are also coming in 3D, so that we can see the people are coming close to us who are talking. It is not that you have to write a message to your girlfriend or your boyfriend and then you wait for it, she will come and kiss you <laughs> on the phone because the three-dimensional phones are being invented here. So that is, that is the reality of technology now. You need not to wait to shake hand. The hand will come on its own. So in that 3D age, I would think of a 3D transformation among young people. What are those 3Ds? One D is dream. Dream big. If you don't have dream, you cannot change the world. If you don't have dream, you cannot change yourself. So dream big. But that dream, if it is confined to your selfish interest, wasted interest, then it will fail. If you start dreaming for your neighbor, and then neighbor, then your whole neighborhood, and the country, and the world, then it will have a difference. So dream big, dream better for others. The second D is that when you dream, you discover the answer. Discover. Discover the potential from yourself. Discover the answers from outside. Discover new ideas. Be innovative in finding sustainable solutions to the problems. And that is a change maker. Discover. And the third important day, those people who dream and don't discover, they fail. Those who discover and don't dream, they fail. Those who discover and dream, they cannot become the sustainable change makers. The third important thing is do. Do. Do now. Today is the day. Now is the time. If you don't do, then who will do? If you don't do now, then when will you do? Do it now. So in the things which you believe, act. So the answer lies in action, in doing, implementing your dreams and your discoveries to action. And we can change. People are asking that what has changed you in your life, Kailas, after winning the Nobel Peace Prize? I don't see much change. I am an ordinary activist and one of you as always. So people are starting calling me, oh, celebrities, take the picture, take the selfies. No problem. The reason was that, <laughs> the reason was that I have to wait for 50 years in my life to shake hands with a Nobel laureate. <laughs> when, I was, when I was five years old, I thought that one day I will shake hands with a Nobel laureate. And when I was about 55, I shook hand with the novel laureate that was uh, Holiness Dalai Lama. But it was not the age of uh, selfies and uh, smartphones. So I was looking here and there, a cameraman like him to take a picture. And I had no picture. So, so far, I don't have any picture with the novel laureate. So why don't you should have all the pictures with the novel laureate who is one of you, who is <laughs> one among you. Keep on me. So that is one thing. But as, as far as the change is concerned, uh, every morning, my wife and I used to argue on tea because sometimes my stomach is not good and she does not offer me more than one cup of tea. And I go into the kitchen and make my own tea. Second time, third time, and she kept keep on fighting. <laughs> but when the Nobel Peace Prize was announced, the next morning, <laughs> She gave me a cup of tea, and she was waiting that this guy will come inside and make the whole kitchen mess, as I do. This thing is lying over there, and uh, things are not in order. I did not go inside. She was looking, 
and then she came, what happened? You have not gone to make your tea, should I make you a cup of tea? Another cup of tea? I said, no, darling, <laughs> you, you don't know. Read this newspaper, on the front page, Kailas Satyarthi is a Nobel Peace Laureate. So I am a Peace Laureate, <laughs> I cannot fight with you anymore. <laughs> So that was the first effect <laughs> that, that made me different from earlier. <laughs> the second thing is that many of my uh, conventional donors who have been supporting us for the work in India, they started calling my people. Now Kela Satyarthi is a Nobel laureate. He does not need any money. Why he should need 20,000, 30,000 euros or 100,000 euros? He can give lectures and earn much more bigger money. But so far, nobody has invited me and give money. But that is one thing. But my, do my donors are just withdrawing, thinking that his organization and he must be having a lot of money because the governments must be pouring in money and funds and no dearth of money. So that is another problem I am facing, that how to survive my organization. But the day when the Nobel Peace Prize was announced, I made it very clear that this is not for me. This is the recognition to the most exploited, most neglected, most abused children on this planet. This is giving the voice to millions, hundreds of millions of voiceless, voiceless children. This is giving the face to millions of voiceless, nameless, faceless people. So the money, the prize money, I have donated to the cause of children. I did not bring for myself, for my, my family, and for my organization. I left it with the Nobel Committee. And that has never happened. The Nobel Committee was quite nervous how to keep this money. This guy is not taking money, but I requested them to hold it for a while. I will ask that who is the most needy person and organizations and the children, and we will make sure that it is 100% spent on the most needy children in the world. I would once again like to congratulate you and thank you. And I believe that change is knocking the door. Change for a better world is knocking the door. Sometimes the change is inside you, it should come out. Sometimes change is outside, but it is knocking the door inside, it is knocking the door outside. Young people all across the world are rising up, refusing exploitation, refusing child marriages, refusing child labor, refusing illiteracy. Young people are rising up and challenging the autocracies and corruption prevailing in their governments, in their businesses around them, in their countries. They don't want to tolerate it. These are all good signs of change which is knocking our doors. And friends, I refuse to accept that the collective power which prevails in each one of you, all of us, cannot make this world much better than ever. I refuse to accept that we don't have capacities, we don't have compassion, we don't have energies, we don't have power to solve the problems of the world, I refuse to accept. Because I believe in me and I believe in you. Thank you so much.